thing with a bottle of like carbonated wine is to twist the bottle and not the cap. So, um, so you sort of hold onto the cap like so, twisting the bottle very gently. And the idea of letting it pop is never, it's not really that necessary. You just need to, yeah, you know, it, it do its thing. I personally had to mix it with apple juice. And that's my uh, drink of choice on a Sunday. As you well know, upstairs we have an exhibition of photography made by participants who joined us for the Rapport Festival. Upstairs and the key to this celebration, the voices and the energy that you see on the walls is that uh, everyone has contributed to document a part of Brixton, document their own part of Brixton. And this intervention occurs because uh, it's important that we use photography to tell a certain kind of truth, you know. Uh, because traditional photography, as far as I'm concerned, is the truth. It's unfiltered, it's un, uh, retouched, it is what it is. It's black and white, it's evidence. It's evidence of our existence, it's evidence of our existence here in Brixton or anywhere in the world, really, more than anything. But it's also evidence of your own existence, you know, should you choose to frame a scene, press that shutter, print it, put it on display, you're kind of owning the situation and you're sharing that situation with an audience. And as you can see upstairs, people are suddenly looking at things that would otherwise walk past every day and taking it in and gathering its purpose. And that's a blessing in a way. You know, we've got time to enjoy, we've got time to reflect, we've got time to think about what's important for the future, think about what we want to do next and think about what's important to us that should be on camera, should be recorded and what stories need to be told. Uh, I've been a photographer Sorry. since the early 90s. I think I went professional around about 1993. Um, back then we shot on film, back then you aim to get a career in editorial, shoot for magazines, having commissions to shoot album covers, to sort of and experience all the parts of photography from shooting live, to shooting fashion, to portraits, weddings, the whole gamut. In the last 19 years, since 2000, I've kind of embarked upon teaching, but not a top-down kind of teaching system, but like just a conversation among people with cameras and film. I think the skills that I want to share here is that we learn to put our ideas on paper, tell stories on paper, on a wall that doesn't require any technology to see what's going on. And um, that's the purpose of these kind of workshops is to sort of get people together in a room making things that are tangible and giving that gift back to the people who you've used as your canvas and I say that because I'm a big fan of street photography and sometimes in street photography you shoot people on the street unawares and sometimes it's nice to give back to those people a scene that you feel complements their life like it looks so good in that light underneath this situation waiting for a bus to go up to Croydon or Thornton Heath um, and so I've got no complaints about any format of photography the only thing I ask of every photographer is that you put your work on paper uh, because even if you make a print and you stick it on a fridge door it'll still be there in 20 years time as long as the fridge is there. I'd like to share with everyone, uh, certainly those who are in the arts of photography and I, that includes filmmaking as well because it's moving photography, it's photography that moves as opposed to the one static frame, you've got 125 frames per second to work with, is um, just to keep doing it and as a as a photographer, it's good to make films, and as a filmmaker, it's good to do photography. And I say this because you will develop a profession at some point, and even if you're a professional photographer, you're shooting mainly digital. That's what, the, that's what the client wants, that's what the world needs right now. But you should shoot film for yourself, just to sharpen your weapon, to sharpen your skills, to have a bit more discipline, to even go out in the street and engage. And the same can be said for filmmakers, just to shoot, just to have a more have a, have a nuanced appreciation of how light works at different times of day. Because to shoot for your client, to shoot professionally, is a compromise for money. But to shoot for yourself is a compromise for, for self. So those are the choices you have. And I would say, 
always it's great to have a career in photography but it's good to have something that you can own for yourself that you can look back on because I know a lot of photographers who overcommit to their profession sometimes burn themselves out and they can't pick up a camera after that because they've got no it's a job and I'm asking you to sort of say well if you're going to shoot digitally if you're going to make films digitally that's your job you get paid that feeds you but have something for yourself own a certain aspect of the work you do and maybe maybe that might be on film it might be a holiday snaps it might be that one time you go out with your friends and you just wanted to take a few snaps just to record the moment and you know 36 shots is a good way of defining that moment and the contact sheet is a beautiful way of telling that story so you'll see upstairs contact sheets you'll see final prints and you'll see work from children to adults to experienced photographers and non-experienced photographers but they all have a chance to explore this medium like like it's like it's the first time and um, that's an important part it always look at the world like a child always be naive about the world when you look through it through a lens so sometimes your lens will ask questions as to why is someone doing that why is this happening and then 20 years later you can look back on that contact sheet and think i think i know why now it's taken me 20 years to figure this out by the end it all makes sense <laughs>